Hello fellow streamers, I hope you are all doing okay. In the last video, I introduced a new freeware for you so you can have some base, basic functionality of Navigraph inside the Sky Vector for free. In this video, I'm going to add something to that feature so you not only have the moving map inside Sky Vector for free, now you have the track history, you have the position and also the track and heading history inside the Sky Vector. Now you can, uh, after each flight, you can analyze what track and what uh, trajectory you have flown. You can analyze your traffic patterns or your approach or holding. Or even in the middle of the flight, you can see where exactly you are headed and where exactly you have deviated from your course. It's kind of interesting and useful for in your instrument training or when you are flying online in that sim. Or even just flying for fun, you, you can see what exactly what the paths you have flown. Uh, we are not going to do any, anything fancy here, I'm just going to change a few lines of code inside the uh, open source freeware that I introduced you in the last video and add this functionality for you. So if you want to have this feature on your flight simulator and on your next flight, follow this video with me until the end. Okay, if you are a subscriber and ha or have just watched my last video, this is the video I show how you can have the moving map inside the sky vector and just introduce you how you can add this to your chrome extensions and so on this is the final result of that video you have a moving map inside the sky vector this is the freeware here as you can see you can download it from flightsim.to and there's also a github repository for that in order to add the track history feature i just forked the github repository from the original person which is momaden you or something like that I just forked that uh, from this guy and just changed a few lines of codes. I did nothing fancy here. All the license goes to the first person, Momaden U, and thanks for his great job. Uh, you can download the code if you like or just go to release it and release the latest version. Right now, I just release only one version, which is 0.1. Go ahead and download the 0.1 release version and copy it to somewhere safe and accessible. For example, I copy it inside my simulator partition and then extract it to a folder. Once you have extracted uh, the folder, you inside this folder you have uh, some sort of documentation and guiding and you have two folders. One of them is FS Web Service, which is the web service. Uh, just go ahead and copy and paste a shortcut for that on your desktop. I haven't changed anything inside this. It's the original web service application. Just right click on that and go to properties compatibility and check run the program as administrator so it always run as administrator and if it won't work if you don't open it as an administrator. That's it. It's just a small uh, software that sends UDP packets from uh, using sim connects to the sky vector on the um, Google Chrome. Uh, go ahead and open the moving map content.js if you like coding, if you know something about JavaScript. If not, you don't need to open it. Just go ahead and open and see what exactly we have done. Just a few lines of code. I added uh, two hard-coded parameters so you can change it for changing the update interval and correction interval. If you know JavaScript, you can go ahead and change the setups for yourself. But if not, no problem. It is ready to use and no need to change anything. Go to your Google Chrome and go to settings. If you already have the last version of the Sky Vector Microsoft Flight Simulator extension, remove that extension and add the new one. Uh, enable the developer mode and navigate uh, to your Sky Vector moving map and make sure you are on the right folder. Select the folder and the extension should load. The error is not important, at least until 2023, so ignore it for now. And right now it's working and it says it's activated. Now all you have to do is just open your Sky Vector and run your flight simulator. I'm gonna load my aircraft on Merhabad Airport, run it 290 right. And I'm gonna arrange my screen here for you. Make sure you have opened the FS web service and it should run uh, run as administrator. Make sure it is connected successfully. When it's uh, connected successfully, it will auto minify to the task and it says sim running. If it doesn't show you the sim running and it just stay on starting web service, it means there's something wrong with your setting or you haven't opened it with, as an administrator or you have a firewall that is limiting the port 8001. So you have to troubleshoot that and open that port. 
but hopefully you are okay and the port 8001 is ready to use okay uh, we have the sky vector we have the pink icon for our moving map nothing new yet but as soon as we release the parking brake and start moving you will witness some new stuffs as you can see the weather is very polluted here right now in Tehran so let's have some few clouds and get rid of this polluted air here and let's have full throttle and commence our takeoff you can zoom in and see that after a few meters or a few feet that we have flown you will see some shadows or maybe trajectory behind your aircraft it means it has a history of your flight cool now not only you have your current position or current position in overlay on an IFR chart no matter it's high low chart or uh, maybe sectional VFR charts or if you are flying in US you have very detailed sectional charts so it's very cool very cool feature you can navigate along a river and follow if and see if you have navigated correctly or not okay let's set the autopilot to have a, st a steady climb and see how it will work in action now you can see the trajectory behind us that's we are flying almost runway heading and now we are turning to the left beautiful scenery of the Mehrabad airport as created by Homer Sim the link is in the description there's no advertising or anything I just using it their product and I recommend it for anyone that's like this place here okay let's uh, use let's do some navigation let's go direct to a closed airport such as Payam the identifier for the VR station is Papa India Mike let's add to direct we can use some procedure we can activate the procedure using the prop but let's go direct but not only direct let's hold over Payam VR uh, let's uh, see the real approach chart for the Payam Airport. Payam Airport has one runway, about four kilometer. It's runway three zero and runway one two. Let's connect our navigraph and check the charts for the Payam Airport. Okay, this is a navigraph. This is a real time navigraph pretty the same and pretty identical to what we have on sky vector almost the same but the navigraph is paid but the sky vector is free and you not only have the moving map you have the trajectory following pass okay let's go to payam airport approach and select vor runway 30 let's overlay the approach chart on the map and here it is as you can see the outbound course is 321 and inbound course is 141 Let's set the inbound course of 141 on um, our Garmin. And the legs should remain on default one minute and the uh, holding turns is standard to the right. So all good, let's activate and all we have to do is to activate the nav mode but uh, first we should engage the heading mode and then we engage the GPS mode <clears throat> right now G uh, heading mode is activated and GPS mode is on standby and will automatically switch to the nav mode and follow the GPS track to the Payam VOR and hold over Payam and let's, uh, as you can see, the minimum holding altitude over Payam is 7,500 feet. So let's climb to 7,500 feet. Okay, there's uh, something I want to mention about the Sky Vector and our plugin. Which is, uh, when you try to zoom in or zoom out, it will automatically change 
based on your zoom level i have uh, written a few line of code so it will automatically change everything based on your zoom so it will fit your latitude and longitude again but when you change the screen everything changes inside the sky vector so you should give it a few seconds and uh, again it will as you can see it will correct itself eventually after maybe something between two seconds or ten seconds it will eventually correct itself so don't worry if you suddenly change the screen size and you can see that everything is changed don't worry just wait a few seconds and it will correct itself for example let me change the screen dimension to something like ipad air and as you can see again everything is messed up but in a few seconds it will correct itself so no need to worry and no need to panic it will correct itself the rate of this correction is limited to something that you can change as i told you if you open the moving map content.js you can change these two hyperparameter you can change update interval and correction interval the update interval is right now at five which means five seconds i believe uh, and the correction is three times so every three times that the plot is updated we are going to correct the latitude and longitude of this uh, based on the screen size so it should be okay for everyone but if you want a very uh, faster or slower update rate you can go ahead and change this item here save it and after save go to again go to extensions uh, find our extension and do a refresh to a reload but basically most of you don't need to change anything it's okay but if you want to change it go ahead and play with the numbers and see the results for yourself okay now the aircraft is cruising and it's steadily cruising climb to 7500 uh, on to Payom. Now I'm going to arrange my screen for so you can see the path that we're going to fly and then I'm going to fast forward the video for you. Okay, as you can see, I just added this sky vector on Google Chrome in the bottom of the page. The Navigraph paid version and the overlays of the map on the top left side of the screen and the map is placement on the top right. You can uh, you can see the PFD, MFD, Navigraph, uh, overlay, approach charts and the sky vector all at the same time and they are all synced up together. Very great flying here. So you can do many things with that. You can train your instrument flying, your VFR flying, you can do whatever you want. And imagine how much more situation awareness you have when you're flying over Watson. If you have the past you have flown, you have the situation awareness of where you are going, where what was the last waypoint, where is the next waypoint, what are the approach and what from what direction you are entering. So it gives you more situation awareness if you have this pass on your maps. Okay, now I'm gonna fast forward the video and let's come back uh, when we arrive at Payam and start holding over that. Okay, we are almost over Parham Airport, as you can see in the bottom of the screen. If you're a pilot, you know that we are uh, heading to the VR station on heading 278. And since the outbound course is 3 to 1, so it's uh, the entry should be something between parallel and teardrop. So basically, Garmin will choose teardrop and will automatically do an entry procedure and enter the holding. As you can see, it's going to change the track to 141 and it's going to turn about uh, it's gonna turn to 2901 actually oh sorry 351 sorry we're going to enter a chair drop procedure and we'll continue one minute on the heading about 351 and then we'll do a right turn and intercept the course one for one to the VR station, but actually we are not doing VR stuff here. Everything is GPS based here. So the mention of this, <laughs> the purpose of this video is just to show you the trajectory. So no need to just mess with this instrument stuffs.
Okay, that's it, guys. As you can see, the aircraft is continue holding over Pion VR and will continue holding, and we will have this history of our flight here. Now we are doing a GPS or based on our autopilot. But imagine you can practice your IFR approaches, instrument approaches, or routing, or just see how well you track your planned course. So this will be very helpful for your flight training or even flying for fun everywhere around the flight semester 2020. Which is once again, I just want to remind you that I didn't, uh, the license for this uh, product is goes to the first person who released it on flightsim.io. I just manipulated a few line of codes and add some features to it. So the main item, the main work is done by uh, another person that link is in the description. And they, uh, he also used some frameworks, JavaScript frameworks from Skyvector, so there's nothing licensed to me here. And maybe in the near future, I'll add some more controls for this. So maybe I'll add some widgets on the Skyvector page so you can enable or disable or reset or just change the update interval directly from the Skyvector web page so you don't need to change the code. Maybe I will do that in the future if I get some few times. So uh, until that time, I hope this video will be useful for you and hit the like button and subscribe button if you like this video and let me know in the comment section below what you think about this and what are your recommendations and uh, how you think about this uh, freeware. Happy flying and enjoy the freeware for Microsoft Flight 2020.